going to get my hair dyed in next week's video. So finally we're going to be fixing this mess that I have right now of my overgrown roots and my super light hair. But that will be all in a separate video. But I don't fucking care at all. It's Darian and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video all about my hypotrophic scar. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope so. And if you don't know what a hypotrophic trophic, trophic or tropic, let's see. Hypertrophic. Hypotrophic. If you guys didn't know, I had a hypotrophic scar on my helix piercing, which is this one. Before I get into this whole video, I really want to make it, first of all, to say that I know that a lot of people have this issue and I was trying to do a lot of research, trying to figure out how to deal with this issue when I had it. And I really couldn't find that much information about it. And I noticed that it was a very common thing to occur when you get especially new piercings. So I'm going to try my best to give you guys my treatment plan on how I was able to get rid of it. I'm going to quickly give you guys a disclaimer that there will be some disgusting photos in this video. So if you don't like that, just make sure to click away. The reason why I'm going to be putting these photos in this video is because I do want to show you guys the progress of how I was able to get rid of it and the before and after photos as well. So you guys can see that not always is it going to be perfect within the first try. So first, I'm just going to give you guys some background about my piercing and all about hypertrophic scars. How to know what is a hypertrophic scar and how to know if you have one is that usually occurs in new piercings and it can also occur in piercings that you've had in for a while but they aren't fully healed. What it is basically is that when bacteria gets into your earring either from not cleaning it properly or a number of different reasons it can occur, it starts to have a little bump either around the piercing or under it or above it. Mine was right under my piercing. Again, giving guys some backstory, my earring, I really wanted to save money but I did go to a lot of different piercing shops that do it with the needle. They were all ridiculously overpriced and especially I thought for a little hole in my ear like it really shouldn't be that much but I went to Claire's and got it with a gun which is not good. Definitely learn from that mistake and go to a reputable professional to get your earring. This does occur most often with piercings that you got with a gun rather than with a needle because with the needle it's just a lot easier and less problems will occur. If you talk to a professional, you will probably avoid all these problems altogether. But if you do have it regardless, I got my piercing back in November of 2017 and I first started to notice a little bump starting to form around my earring and it just kind of gradually grew and grew and I was like, oh no, this is not good. I always cleaned it with the Claire's solution that they gave me which looks like this. And they told me to clean it three times a day. They showed me how to do it with a cotton ball and stuff like that to clean the front and the back. And I did that, but then I got lazy. So always remember that it takes a long time for cartilage piercing to heal. It actually takes at least a year to heal. And I haven't changed this earring out since. I heard that you're supposed to get the stud first and then once it's been a year, then you can change it out to the hoop, which is what I'm planning to do. This problem occurred four months into the healing process and I thought that it was completely healed when I first got the earring. It was just very sore a lot of the times and I couldn't sleep on that side, but sometimes I would roll over and my very long hair would just get caught in it all the time, especially when it was taking a shower. You know, it was just always tangling around it. So I'm gonna quickly go into the treatment and tell you guys exactly what I did to get rid of it. And like I said, again, you guys can see all the photos here. I'll post a timeline of when each one of these pictures were taken. It honestly, it gets really gross over time. But when I first started to try to heal the piercing on my own, I just kept cleaning it with the solution. And then it kept growing and it just was not good at all. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to take out my piercing. And it looks so ugly. And I would always have my hair down to hide the fact that I had it. There's a lot of things you can do to help heal this. Of course, this is my process. People might have different things that works for them and things like that. I heard that using tea tree oil really helps. I went to, I think it was Marshalls or TJ Maxx and I found this tea tree oil and it is Thursday Plantation Australia's original antiseptic essential oil, 100% pure. And it says even on here, it says 
It's for cuts and abrasions, pimples, and insect bites. So product not tested on animals and it's vegan. So it's all good stuff in here. And as you can see, I've been using this thing for a month and it's still very filled up. And when I got it, it was honestly not even filled up all the way. I just kept putting, I mean, I read online that it's not the best to put essential oils on the piercing or the uh, problem area directly, but I didn't really listen to that. I just did what felt right for me. And because this thing is specifically for these problems, I wasn't really too worried about it. But if you are worried about that, then you should probably dilute it, put it into some water and then mix it up and then you can soak your ear in it. But for the tea tree oil, I just put in one drop every morning and night. So every morning when I woke up and every night right before I went back to sleep. And I just, again, like I said, I just put one drop and it would kind of drip down on the side, but I try to put it where it's in between the bump and the earring. And then I just kind of wiggle my earring a little bit just to make sure that it gets inside and not just sit on top of it. And what this does basically is just really dry out the area. Before I put it on, I did actually take a Q-tip and use the solution and I would clean the area first then put it on and I would leave it to soak. So that way it just really cleans out the area. The tea tree oil can really just work its magic. So what it does is basically just dry your skin and it will eventually start to make the bumps smaller and smaller and you will find little flakes of skin coming off over time. I know it's really gross, but that's what works. And like I said, it did take me about a month, a month and a half to get rid of it completely but I kept doing this all the time. I always, when I could, I just kept cleaning it with the solution. And like I said, the tea tree oil could be a little harsh for your ear. It really depends. If you have really sensitive skin, then maybe it's not the best idea for you. But definitely, if you can go talk to a professional to get some tips and things like that, obviously this is what I did. So other things you can do to really help the recovery process go a little bit faster is to not sleep on your earring. If you have long hair, try not to let your hair get tangled, especially in the shower. Like for me, I was telling you guys that it was really my hair would get heavy and just always rub up against the earring and it would just irritate it even more. So try to do everything you can to prevent your earring from being irritated. And that is how I got rid of my hypotrophic scar on my piercing. So you guys can leave in the comments down below suggestions and give each other feedback on what worked for you. This is personally what worked for me and and made the problem go away. So if you guys found this video helpful at all, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down to my channel below. And I'll see you guys in my next video next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.